As we begin this Sunday morning, we want to thank each and every one for coming to One Accord Church this morning. We're glad to have each and every one out this morning on this beautiful day. And also for those of you that are viewing this live, where you're viewing this live now on our television programs, again, we want to thank you for tuning in as well and invite you to come join us at One Accord Church. Um, the name says it all. We believe in doing it in one accord with the Word of God in no other way. <clears throat> this is the way, the truth, and life. And if you believe in that, we'd love for you to come join us and uh, be a part of what God's doing to change the community. Um, this message here is, um, I know for several um, Wednesdays and, and Sunday evenings, we've been talking a lot about um, the armor, and I think even one of the praise songs was about being dressed for the battle. Um, and and one of the things that said that you need to put on the, uh, the faith. In fact, they said it was the most important piece. Right? So that must be a pretty big thing. Right? Everybody agree? It must be a pretty big thing, right? It really must be a really big, big thing, hasn't it? Well, there it is. Does anybody see it? You know why you can't see it? Does anybody want to know why you can't see what's on this paper? Because it's a mustard seed. Can you see it now? Apparently not. I'm not going to blow it up for you. It would ruin the whole purpose. This is all you need. If I was to take it off with this blue paper, you all could not see it. This is all you need. In fact, they probably put it in your hand. If you're like me, you probably still couldn't see it. I, I wanted to drive this point home because there's, um, God talks about faith so much throughout the Bible. But we think that we've got to have a load of it. No. Just the mustard seed. You've heard this, right? Everybody's heard it over and over again. Well, the, the entitlement of this message is a faith of a mustard seed. And the reason why it's entitled is because God did a whole lot with a, whole, with a lot of little. God did a whole lot with very little, in fact. And I, I want to go to, I think, one of the greatest shows of faith that I, I believe is, is in the Bible. And you all know the story. But I would like for you to just look at it in a different way at this mustard seed of faith. Just think now, how much faith does it take to move a mountain? Alright, how much faith does God require every one of us to have? So, okay, everybody's still with me. I'm going to drive this faith thing into you because if I can get that little bit in you, some great things might just happen. Well, if we kind of look at Joshua's life, I want to move up with Joshua and, uh, and go to Joshua. He had a great challenge. You know, Joshua, he was, first of all, when he replaced Moses when Moses died. And also, too, if you read on in the, in the story of Joshua, the, the flooded Jordan had to be parted for them to cross. Not just the Red Sea, but also the Jordan River had to be crossed. Anybody know that's true? In fact, uh, not only Joshua, Joshua had to, Israel must be led to Canaan. Now, these miracles, when Joshua took over, started happening one behind the other. But I want to talk to you about a, a faith thing in Joshua chapter 6. Uh, if you would like to follow along with me in your Bibles, Joshua chapter 6. Verses 1 through 20, because this is so, so important. You know the story. But I'm hoping today you open your eyes, your spiritual eyes, to the faith. Because without faith, it's what? Impossible to please God. Okay, why is that important? Who do we pray to help us when we're going through something? So who's going to take care of their needs what we're going through? Okay, so that's why we got to understand 
God expects us to put whatever little bit of faith we got only in Him. This world requires a lot of faith. <clears throat> the Word doesn't. I'm just saying, God just didn't come up and say, let's do mustard seed. Now He's trying to let you know God is that big. Let's look at what He did with Joshua. Joshua in chapter 6. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. Now none went out and, and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given unto thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horns, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout. And the wall of the city shall fall down flat. And the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. And Joshua the son of Nun called the priest and said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on and compass the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass, when Joshua had spoken unto the people, that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns passed on before the Lord and blew the trumpets and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. And the armed men went before the priests that blew with the trumpets and their re reward came after the ark and the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And Joshua had commanded the people saying, Ye shall not shout nor make any noise with your voice. Neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout. Then shall you shout. Now, before I finish, Joshua told them not to say a word. Be quiet. Let God work. Stay out of His way. Don't get in the way. Keep your mouth shut until God says open it. That could preach all by itself. But anyway. So the ark of the Lord compassed the city going about it once. And then came into the camp and lost in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning and the priest took up the ark of the Lord. And seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew with the trumpets, and the armed men went before them. But the re reward came after the ark of the Lord, the priest going on and blowing with the trumpets. This sounds like it's just repetition after repetition, but there was a purpose. And the second day they compassed the city once and returned to the camp, so did they six days. And it came to pass on the seventh day, that they rose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner, but they done it seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. And the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, because she hid my messengers that we sent. 
and ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed. When you take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel cursed and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come unto the treasure of the Lord. And verse 20, so the people shouted with the priest when the priest blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. Now that's the Old Testament version, right? Now, the reason I shared all that scripture was with you because I want to introduce you to some faith. Um, now, the Old Testament, yes, that's the story of Joshua, we all know it. But you know, even in the New Testament, listen to what the Lord said in one verse of scripture in Hebrews 11.30. He said this, by faith, by what? The walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. By faith. I don't know any other message that we need this day and time than to focus on that miracle that day. Because if you know anything about miracles, um, how about remember, you know, uh, the miracles begin when the Jordan River was open and it closed behind them. Also remember, they had to remember about how the Red Sea had parted for them. Also, we, this also has to do with Joshua, how he was under the, the authority of God and, and God was not going to let anything happen to Joshua. But another miracle needed to happen for Jericho to be conquered. And that was Joshua's test. That was Joshua's test as a man of faith. We all are put through tests. But what determines our test is our faith. Do we put our faith in people? Or do we put our faith in God? God don't need our help. God don't even need you. God just wants to see if he can muster up a seed of faith in any of us to believe in the impossible. Well, you don't understand my circumstances. It's okay. God does. You don't know what I'm going through. It's okay. God does. Listen, church, we rely on the world, and that's the reason why our faith is faltering, because the world is not the answer. God didn't design us to have faith in this world, in the government, in the system. God designed us just to put a little bit of faith in Him. Now, you, can you imagine if, look, Joshua had some faith, didn't he? I mean, he had a lot of faith, didn't he? No. He just had just enough to get the job done. He just believed. Seemed impossible. But I want you to notice something. This was Joshua's in verses 1 and 2. This was Joshua, the opportunity of faith. This is a small problem with this situation. If you know anything about the history of Jericho, Jericho stands in the way of the conquest of Canaan, which God had promised Moses, and now he promised Joshua. But this was a problem with Jericho. Why? Because Jericho, that wall, they're strong people. In fact, this was called the wall city. And in fact, the defenders of this wall were mighty men of valor, the Bible says. So now all of a sudden Joshua's got to think of some faith. Because humanly speaking, let's be honest with you. If we saw a large wall, we'd be thinking over it, under it, or through it. Right? But Joshua couldn't rely on his own thinking. When you see an obstacle, you're trying to figure out how to get around it. Right? But God said, Joshua, I expect you to do none of that. 
We're going to conquer that wall because that wall is in the way of what I promised you. But I want you to do it my way. No, I don't want you to climb the wall. No, I don't want you to dig a tunnel under the wall. And no, I don't want you to try to break through the wall. So the alternative was faith. Listen, just like salvation, you got to believe it. You, you just got to believe it. You just got to believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose. You got to believe that you're saved. How much does God require you to have faith in how much you're saved? <laughs> do you believe you're saved today? Do you believe that God can um, do anything? Is the Jericho Wall a big deal? It is in our understanding. But it's not such a big deal with God. I mean... I know the Jericho wall and this faith thing I'm going to push at you is to help you understand that you got to put your faith, whatever little bit you got, in God. But what I want you to understand more that God did something bigger than Jericho. God sent His only Son to die on the cross so you could go to heaven. So God must have created a heaven. God must have created the earth. So uh, now all of a sudden Jericho don't look like such a big problem. What else did God do? Are you here? Yeah. Well, who brought you here? <laughs> who made you? Who designed you? Who gave you um, in His image and likeness a brain when we use it? <laughs> who gave us all this? God. What's my point, church? God will do anything. And He can do anything. But He works off of your faith. Your little bitty faith. We've got caught up in a world that, that's put so many things around us that we're blinded. In other words, we, we don't walk by faith, not by sight. Because... Satan has put so many things in front of us to block us of our faith wall. We got so many other alternatives to look at, so many other options in life to look at. Quit looking at the options and just put this into God. People say, oh, I've got a lot of faith. Impossible. He wouldn't have used the mustard seed if he thought we all could. We all have faith until the corn gets tough. Let's just be honest. Church, can we just get real for a second? I know I'm live, so I'm the one who get in trouble, not y'all. But we all, as long as it's going good, we got some faith. In fact, we can roll in a wheelbarrow mustard seed like, boy, I'm just, I got faith. I just, you know, it's easy to have faith when you, you just won $20 million. I got faith. I, I'm, I'm taking care of them. Yeah, sure. That don't take no faith. It takes that faith whenever everything is going wrong. See, God knows that everything we're going through. So God is sending out a signal to us right now saying, look. I know your problem is looking big. I know what you're going through is really tremendous in your finite mind. But just do me something. Just believe in me. Put some faith in me. And this was Jericho. This is the situation that Joshua was dealing with. He had to say, look, can you imagine all these thousands of people say, Joshua, we're going to do what? <laughs> you mean, read your Bible. You, all these thousands of people, this, this army that's going in front before these, um, the, the, these trumpet blowers, which was these long horns, and, and then the, the Ark of the Covenant, all this stuff, and, and, and you got all these men up here, armies, and you want us to do what? How about let's just scope them out and take them all off at the wall. But his muster seed of faith led the whole people. 
Joshua was what they call a faith builder. You know why he had the faith of a mustard seed? Because he had an encounter with an angel. And it won't just any angel if you read your Bible. You know who had an encounter with Joshua? He was the captain of the Lord's host. Read your Bible. He sent the big cheese to deliver this message. Because he knew that Joshua had to see it to believe it. He sent the big man. So Joshua was like, wow. I could start right here. What does it take for us to put some faith in God? Who's going to have to show up? What's going to have to be done before we get our eyes off the world and get our eyes back on God? He told him, he said, I, the promise was I have given unto thy hand Jericho. So Joshua's faith in God's promise made the victory complete because he believed it. Does anybody know what God has promised for you? It's here. It's up to us whether we believe it or not. Let's look at the strange battle plan, and this is the obedience of faith. Listen, yes, you got this is an opportunity to show your faith, but then there becomes obedience. Some people think that, that we can, excuse me, my English, we can live like we're going to hell, but have faith on going to heaven. Let me go on and tell you, they had to be obedient. They had to be, the strange battle plan was given to Joshua. He was told what to do to compass the city six times, and then on the seventh day, compass the city seven times. And when the priest blow the horn, the ram's horn, and all was supposed to shout. Think of the faith, church. Think of the faith that it was required to believe in this plan. It looked impossible. Okay? It, it was impossible. They're looking at this great wall saying, man, this is impossible. Why did God do it this way? It's because God wants to under, us to understand something. All of God's blessings come by faith and nothing is impossible if we put our faith in Him. Faith brings answers to prayers. And we must understand that faith requires obedience. What's obedience? There's a word we don't like to use anymore. We take it out of everything. Because we don't like to be obedient. See, everybody's turning me off right now. Everybody said, uh oh, he's going here. If he didn't do exactly what God said, Joshua was not going to conquer. I'm going to translate that into my country boy thinking. If you don't do it God's way, don't expect God to move on it. If you want God to move in what you're going through, put, make sure what you're going through is God's way. Make sure you put your faith and trust in Him. Make sure you get your mind off everything else and, and do it God's way. Faith requires obedience. Remember the healing of Naaman the leper? Look what he told him to do. Where Elijah told him to go wash himself in the Jordan seven times. Before he get his healing. Did he cop an attitude? Sure he did. He said, I'm not going to do this. I'm going back home. Why have I got to go get dirty? See, we want God's blessings, but we don't want to hear God's word. We, we, we want God to touch us, but we want Him to do it His way. We don't want to do it His way. I, I, I'm not going to apologize to you, church. Listen, if you're looking for God to move in your life, you better make sure God is running your life. We've got to understand, like, even like we just said with Naaman, he got an attitude, but the servant said, look, you need to get off your attitude. You better go on back and do it if you want to get rid of this leprosy. Because he was a powerful man. But he had leprosy. So what did he have to do? I, my old country term, he had to get off his high horse. Some of us need to get off our high horse so that God can use us. He had to humble himself down, but that seventh time he went and washed, guess what? His leprosy left him. But why did it leave him? Because he was obedient. 
Because he was obedient. His faith was obedient. Well, how about the one where Jesus went and done a wedding? Carried the pots of wine. Jesus told him what to do. He told him, he said, um, Jesus had told them to fill the water pots with what? With, 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 with water, the new skin. And what did Jesus do? When they done what Jesus asked them to do, they received their... <coughs> when Jesus did what they told them to do, they received their blessing. Whenever you do what Jesus tells you to do, you receive your blessing. Whenever you do what Jesus tells you to do, you receive your answer. Whenever you do what Jesus tells you to do, you receive answer to your prayer. Whenever you don't do what Jesus tells you to do, you don't get it. And that's what we got to understand something. Faith requires that obedience. How about Paul's prayer? Lord, what will thou have me to do? Remember that Damascus Road encounter? Where, look, what did, what's the first thing Paul did, Silas did? He said, Lord, what will thou have me do? The Lord told him what to do. What did Paul do? He did it. What happened when he did it? He got it. Y'all ain't working with me at all today, boy. When Paul did what was asked of him to do, he received his request. Whenever Naaman did what God asked him to do, he received his healing. Whenever Joshua did what the Lord asked him to do, he received his victory. I don't know. That's, I just can't get much simpler. I don't know how else to put this. Do it God's way or nothing. If you do it God's way, you've got to listen to Him. How do you listen to Him? Because you've got to be willing to listen. <laughs> how many of us are not willing to listen? I hear you, Lord. I'm working on that. Say, so you said what? I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't quite understand that. Because we don't like to hear the truth. Because Satan is a liar and he tries to keep us from the truth. The truth shall set you. And that doesn't mean just from bondage of sin. That means it sets you free spiritually to receive. When you're set free, that means you're open to receive what God wants you to have. And no doubt, Joshua, strange enough, saying, this looks impossible. And I can imagine them people up there on the Jericho wall. King, you've got to see this. There's a bunch of crazy folks walking around the wall, blowing these horns, and there's not one word being said. Nobody is saying a word. See what? I'm going to paraphrase. I can imagine all these people up there on this wall of hard. You bunch of dummies down there. What's your problem? I imagine they were even throwing stuff at them. But guess what? The Lord said don't you say a word. No matter what they say. No matter what they think. No matter what they do. Listen. You don't say a word. I've already got your enemy. I've already taken care of it. Keep your mouth shut and let me handle it. Now don't look that up. It's not quite like that. But the Lord did tell them not to say one single word. And all these people up there are trying to laugh at them like, you got, you, I can't believe this. But I tell you what, like, what, what's the old saying? What, wipe the smile off their face? When they were all sitting on that wall, when Joshua said, shout! I bet you they didn't have time to get off that wall then. I bet you there was some serious panic going on. The enemy didn't expect it because they didn't understand it. Them people walking around that problem was people that had faith in what God had told them to do and they were obedient and they did exactly what God said no matter what the world thought they said no, God said he'd do this and I'm going to trust him no matter what the world says I don't care 
It don't matter what they say about me. I'm going to do it God's way. Somebody get this. Quit worrying about your neighbor. Quit worrying about somebody in your house. If they don't like it, get over it. I'm going to receive my blessing and you're not going to talk me out of it. God told me the way to fix my problem and I'm going to do it His way because God can't lie. So I'm going to put my faith to work and I'm not even going to listen to you. I bet you back in that day if they'd have had them things, what you put in here now to listen to music? I bet you they all probably went around singing in their mind, victory in Jesus. Everybody's going around saying, can't reach them, can't bother them. Because see, they had their eyes on Jesus. See, let me tell you something. Listen close to church. The world does not understand obeying in faith. They think that we are crazy for believing in the impossible. What has God got to do to get us to understand this? Yes, everybody's preaching. No, it's called compromise. And the reason why we've gotten adapted to compromise is because it makes us feel okay. We're okay with the way things are. We're okay with the way we live. We're, we're just okay. But see, Satan's a liar. See, you can't be okay. You've got to do it God's way. The, and, and, and this is so important because, see, God is just asking you to put that seed of faith in, in, in what he's promised. Now, now, how do you put a seed of faith in the whole word? Because it's God. You just believe. God's already sent us everything we need from the beginning to the end, Alpha and Omega. It's all written. It is finished. He's already sent us everything we need. He just said, would you just give me that much? Just, just give me that much. Okay, the Bible says by his stripes you're healed. Physical, and spiritually. Okay, how much faith have you got in that scripture? It's written. Well, it's inspired. People have done this. Well, it's the inspired word of God. It's all words. People made it up. No, it's the inspired word of God. And Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father about by me. But Jesus said, but it also said in the Bible too that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of only begotten of the Father, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. The word of God is Jesus. And if we were to put our faith in Jesus, which is the word, then you might see something happening in your circumstances. So quit walking around with your lip dragging the ground. Get rid of the lip. <laughs> Kick the lip to the curb. And get your eyes on Jesus. Well, Pastor, it looks impossible. <laughs> Good. Now you know how Joshua felt when he looked at that wall. See, he got his eyes off of the problem. And got his eyes on the solution. Now verses 15 through 20. Was the overcoming power of faith. Now listen. Who did the. Big cheese in God's army. Go to. Joshua. He went to one man. Somebody just. Drained that in your brain for a second. He went to one man and all of a sudden the whole, everybody followed him. One man with this much faith took down the walls of Jericho. Look at the power that was behind this. The seventh day was the day of victory. They marched around the city seven times. The priests blew their trumpets like they had done before. And But for once, Joshua said, shout. And what happened? The walls fell down. Victory, church. Victory comes to those who are not going to sit back and let Satan win. Listen. We need to quit shouting with the world. We need to be shouting the word. 
Listen, church, we, are, we have already come because of who we are. We need to shout. Whenever you see a wall, shout that thing down. Whenever you've got something in your life, don't sit back there and, 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 grow and, and, and draw back and quit. Shout. Now, anybody ever had Satan come at you so bad you just had to shout at him? Anybody ever been so sick, so messed up you just wanted to shout? Well, see, guess what? Can you imagine a whole bunch of people just ready and sick and tired of Satan winning and decide to shout it out? Amen. Anybody ever shouted out Satan? Amen. I have. I've gone down the road and gotten so mad sometimes in my Christian walk. Boy, I mean, I just, smoke was coming out. And all of a sudden, I just shouted and screamed. Got mad. Anybody ever got mad because Satan is beating you up so bad? Well, listen, quit letting him beat you up. Shout him out. Break down that wall of depression. Break down that wall of anger. Break down that wall of bitterness. Break down that wall of strength. Just shout it down. How do you shout it down? By the name of Jesus. If you don't know nothing else, just say Jesus, 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 Jesus. No, we'll go out and We want him to exercise this. I wish y'all could see it. <laughs> it looks like a flea. It's so tiny. But all you want, we're going to go out and do it, and we're going to start focusing on our problems. I'm not belittling what you're going through. But what I wouldn't be worth the grain of salt if I didn't tell you that we serve an almighty God. It wouldn't be worth nothing for you to be here if I couldn't tell you God's not expecting you to get a wheelbarrow load of faith in, in, in your circumstance. He just asking you just to get enough believing in an almighty God. God is already the great I am. He's already the king of kings. He's already who he is. God is almighty. He is the great I am. All he's asking you to do is just put a little bit of faith and believing in it. What's our question? What is our greatest obstacle that we go through? I have to look. Some of us have got some pretty big obstacles to come through. Some of us have sicknesses and diseases that the first thing we want to do is, oh no. Some of us have financial situations you don't see no way out. Some of us have situations in their family unit that they just don't know how they're going to work out. Some of us have situations in our family unit with our children and our grandchildren. Some of us have situations like we do that we don't know how our grandchildren is going to survive what they're going through. But listen, listen, church. Let's put down what the world has put in front of us. And let's put something up that we know will knock down that wall. I know, listen, I have to say this to you. I, I, I know, I don't know what you're going through, but I know what it's like for Satan to tell you, give up, quit, it don't matter. It don't matter, you, you, you know, you messed up, you, you royally messed up, there's no way out. I know what it's like for the doctors to tell you there is no hope. There, there, you, you, this is what you've got. This is what you've got to deal with. I, I know what the world is feeding us. But I also know what if you just can put some seed of faith in, in God's promise, what God can do. I've seen God change everything everybody thought was going to happen and turn it around to His glory. I know what it's like. I don't know why. I, my heart goes out to Teresa with what she's going through. And I don't belittle that fact, but I know who made the hearts. I know who made us. I know that no weapon formed against us is going to prosper. And every tongue that rises up against us in judgment, thou shalt condemn. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. I'm not going to listen to what this world has already diagnosed us as having. I'm going to believe in the faith that must see the faith in a God that will take care of that need. It 
every one of us have won, got the greatest victory of all because of Jesus. Amen. Jesus defeated death. He defeated hell. He defeated the grave. He defeated Satan. And when you take all of them equations out of the picture, why can't we have that just enough faith to believe that God will move that wall that we've got in front of us? I know how people will tell you this, and I just have to be honest with you. People will tell you, well, this is what you're going to have to deal with. People's going to tell you, this is not going to work. Well, all I've got to do is tell you, you need to quit listening to the people and you need to start hooking up with some people that's going to march with you on that wall. You need to quit listening to all these negative people out there that want you to sit down at the campfire and give up. You need to quit get around some people that's going to march with you by faith. Put some faith together where we unite together. Whenever, whatever you're going through, say, look, I'm praying with faith for God. He's going to knock this wall down. We need to get rid of the negativity that's keeping our walls up because that's what Satan wants us to do. Doubt and you go without. We need to get rid of that mess. But it can't be done if we don't have that little seed of faith. Some of us ain't going to like this message. I'm pretty sure that whole crowd of Jericho, I'm pretty sure Joshua's crowd probably thought he had lost his mind. I mean, think about it. All God had to say, well, look, just go up there and shout. The first day, just go up there and shout. It's all going to come down. But God said, no, I need for you to show me some obedience here, church. I, I need to you to show me you're willing to walk with me. I, I need for you to see if you're going to do what I've asked you to do. God will supply all our needs, but He wants us to do it His way. What's His way? Being obedient. Now, I don't know what you got going on or what you're going through, and it's really none of my business, but God knows. But listen to me. There's one thing I do know if I don't know anything else. You do it God's way, He will make a way. I have seen in my life where I have tried to do it my way and I'd get mad as fire for anybody telling me, well, then if you do it God's way, it would be better. And I laughed at them. I made jokes at them because I didn't believe them. But let me tell you what I believe today. That I'm still here and not dead because I decided to believe. Just had enough faith to believe it. That day that I was sitting out there, didn't want to go no further. I just, Rosa had enough faith to say, well, Lord, if you're real, show up. I don't have nothing else to say. Show up if you're real. That little bitty faith. God showed up. Listen, God don't want you to be politically correct or religiously correct. God just wants you to come to Him. Forget your how you're going to pray. How about just come up here and shout? <laughs> how about just forget all the stuff you've been trained to do and just come up here and shout. Shout to the Lord. Trust Him. But listen, Satan's going to keep that wall up as long as you keep down today. Let's put down the down. And let's lift up the shout. Church, this altar is open. Whatever your needs are, bring them to the Lord this morning. Most of all, trust Him with it. Just give it. Just say, Lord, I don't even understand what I believe, but I know that you are who you are. And I surrender to you today. Trust Him with it, church. This altar is open.